Hello, my name is Gray. And my name is Crystal. And this is Bustation Beauties, a supernatural commentary podcast where I, as someone who has seen this show several times, and I, as someone who only knows the show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian. Both Asian. So, for today's episode, we will be discussing Season 2, Episode 14. Born Under a Bad Sign, written by Catherine Yumfries, directed by J. Miller Tobin. Yeah, so, um, what else has J. Miller Tobin I actually directed? checked, and he directs one episode per season until season five, so from season two to five, he okay. has four episodes Interesting. total. Interesting. And all of them are iconic episodes. Yeah. Yeah, like, no, I'm looking now. That is Interesting. Yeah. Because I feel like the main feature of this episode was the bad slow mo fast mo. Well no, I that's true, but uh I, I think we'll get into it later. I really like the way the first the teaser portion of the episode was directed, you know. So I thought that was cool. And then we get the like a really bad slow mo and I was like, Okay, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I think it, I think this one was pretty decent when it comes to um, directing. Uh, mm. I would like to point out that are you familiar with the corridor um, slide down hand on the window scene? Um, the sex one. The sex oh my one god! That, this was him. It was him. So oh. uh, looking forward to that. So We're grateful see. for that. Literally. I love it when people make AMVs and it's like a completely random pairing and then they just put that in there just to be like, they had sex. Don't even Is think about, about it. Is this about my Meg Kelly video? <laughs> Don't even think about it. Like, I, never okay, think yeah, about Okay, yeah, but anything. I did use... I used the hand sliding down the window to say that Meg and Kelly had sex and then Paula. Which they did, canonically. So true. So, yeah, I guess we can start with what did you know about this episode before going in? So, I guess I didn't actually know what it was entirely until the then sequence where it shows Joe and then Meg, and I was like, oh, okay. Um, So, in general, I know that at some point in this episode, Meg possesses Sam, and that he tells Joe, my daddy shot your daddy in the head. But I guess I didn't really know that many other details about it, and I didn't know when Sam was going to be Meg and when he was going to be Sam. Yeah. I actually, like, this, for some reason, like, this episode title is seared into my head as an important episode, Mm -hmm. but I have absolutely no idea what the episode is about. So I just know it's important that Uh we're here, but I don't know what it's about. So, uh, like, like you said, like the the moment I knew was like, oh, the teaser is happening. Oh, okay, it's this episode. Yeah. So yeah. That, so yeah. And I knew I was in for a fucking ride. <laughs> yep. So hell yeah. So the episode starts with Dean, uh, just hanging out, and <laughs> he is <laughs> taking a call. And it's from Ellen, and he's, like, freaking out, and he's saying that Sam has been missing for a while, and he's asking, like, has anyone heard about him? And then Ellen's, like, saying no, blah, blah, blah. When the phone rings, and it's Sam, and uh, Dean answers it, and then goes to a hotel, to a motel, and enters a room, and... Sam is there, and he is bloody, and just staring into the ether. Dean asks if he's bleeding. Sam says, I tried to wash it off. He's (sighs) so Lady Macbeth for this. Ooh. Ooh. I love that. 
And he says, I don't think the blood is my blood. And uh, Dean asks, what the hell happened? And Sam says, Dean, I don't remember anything. And he looks so sad and vulnerable. And it's such a good line. Like, his voice does a little crack. Like, hello. Ah, this entire episode, like, I don't know, like, it's so, mm, it's so, mm. it's spicy, yeah. It's delicious. <laughs> anyway, uh, like like I said earlier, love this to entire... see men in distress. <laughs> yeah, like this entire portion was directed in a way that it's like super choppy, as in you know how like in vlogs they would like transfer to another shot, but like the audio mm-hmm. of the previous shot is still going. Like it's that kind of yeah. um, editing. I think I thought it was pretty cool. I liked it, and I thought it it added to the frantic nature of the scene, mm. which is something that they have attempted in the past but failed at. I feel like the whole frantic like it's a bit choppy, but like in the past it just mm-hmm. looked like incredibly bad slow motion, which is yeah. also in this episode. But right, we can't always get I, what we want. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We're not talking about House MD this episode. <laughs> Is that a promise? <laughs> no. No. Because <laughs> I don't break promise. For real. So, honestly, I don't know if it that the choppiness worked for me as well visually as it did for you. But the, it had its moments where mm-hmm. it worked out. It showed Dean's disorientation pretty well. So... Yeah. Um, we go to the next scene. A little bit of time has passed in the motel room. And, uh, apparently Dean found out that Sam checked in two days ago under the name Richard Sambora. And he says, the scariest part about this whole thing is that you're a Bon Jovi fan. I'm pretty sure Dean has listened to Bon Jovi at some point. What a hypocrite. Uh, Imagine if, like, this entire episode, I was just, like, bashing on Dean. (laughs) Truly a moment. I feel like Dean, at least in the first half of this, like, episode, has been surprisingly likable to me. Oh, he's extremely likable in this episode, because he's so pathetic! (laughs) He's really so pathetic. At some point, he is wet and pathetic, so, like... (laughs) Yeah. Check marks. Yeah. Yes, no, I love the scene where Joe has to rescue him from under the bridge because you know that she's fantasized about having him wet, pathetic, and poor little meow meow like this before. He is literally like he was going, ouch! Yowch! <laughs> oh, Owie! Just Owie. like Jack, what was his last name? Literally, he was like, ow! Oh. <laughs> Good for him. I love him yeah. this episode. Yeah. Except for when he leaves Joe behind and is, like, the biggest dick about it. But we'll get there. We'll get to it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so no one's noticed anything, like, unusual or loud about Sam's room. Um, And Sam is still, like, clearly very upset. He goes, like, oh, you mean no one saw me walking around covered in blood and, like, how the hell did I get here, Dean? What happened to me? Um, Dean says, like, it's okay, we'll just deal with the situation. And Sam goes, really? Because what if I hurt someone? Or worse? What if this is what Dad warned you about? And Dean's like, calm down there, buddy. Let's, like, just solve this mystery. So the last thing Sam remembers is him and Dean in West Texas and he went out to grab some burgers and apparently that was an entire week ago and then he woke up here bloody and feeling like he'd been asleep for a month. Uh, Dean notices that there's blood on the window so Sam's probably been coming in through there. So they go out to investigate. Yeah. And uh, as they're walking, they pass by this, I don't know how to describe it, like, 
like storage units, I guess. This yeah, is like what garages, they're at. Maybe? Yeah, like garage storage unit thing. And it's like a whole suspense. Like Sam's like, oh my god, I recognize this. And he's like, really? And he was like, nah. <laughs> I, I, it's just the vibes. But, you know, he, he feels like he has been here before. So, he, like, points at, like, a garage and goes, like, why don't you open that one? And it's locked. And Sam goes, wait. And then uh, reaches into his pocket, pulls out a key. Okay. And as we know, if there's a key, there must be a lock. <laughs> so, they unlock the lock. And they open the garage door to see a car and like Dean is still joking that is like because the car is like one of those like Beatles car I guess you know mm-hmm. what I mean yeah. yeah and he's like oh you didn't steal this didn't you and you know he's just he's just a goofy silly little guy he's just joking around at a very serious situation because it's his coping mechanism and they open the doors and they see that there's blood everywhere in the steering wheel. And uh, Dean points out the back seat, which has a bloody knife. Ooh. Uh, at some point, like Sam says, you think I used this on someone? And and Dean just goes, I'm not thinking anything, which I love. Dean I was think, like, like, maybe you just used the knife to spread some strawberry jam on some toast. Have you considered that, Sam? Well, literally, this would be my response. Every time anyone goes like, what do you think? I'll just go, I'm not thinking anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, I love that. Anyway, like, uh, Dean makes other comments about like there being like a pack of cigarettes in the car. And he's like, you're not a smoker. You, it, this can't be you. You don't smoke menthols and then he they find a gas receipt from a couple towns over so they go to that gas station to see if sam has been there yeah so they go over and dean asks if sam's getting any deja vu about this and he's like nah so they go into the like convenience store attached to the gas station to see if anyone remembers Sam. And the cashier there is like, oh my god, what the fuck? Get out of here. What? And Dean's like, are you talking to like him, to Sam? And the clerk is like, yeah, this guy came in yesterday completely drunk, grabbed like a malt liquor from the fridge and just started chugging right in front of me. Um, and apparently he also threw the bottle at the cashier's head, and the whole time Dean's going, this guy? Th- <laughs> this guy did th- th- Sweet little Sammy yeah. did that? And it's so fun. Um, and Sam's, like, looking all pathetic, going like, look, I'm really sorry if I did anything. And the- <laughs> <laughs> the cashier threatens to call the police and he says, Tell your story, walkin' pal. Popo will be here in five. I'm at- and no one in the history of the universe has tried to sound intimidating while calling the cops Popo. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Do I know? Well, I've heard it in some rap songs and they sound pretty intense about it, so. I think this is something people so. say. Yeah, I think this is something like maybe it's mm, off a time. Maybe say. it's off a certain time. You know, we're Gen Zers, so we don't know anything. <laughs> it's true. We're not Literally. thinking anything. Yeah, I'm not thinking so, anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So Dean sends Sam to go wait in the car, and he questions the cashier. Asking what direction Sam went in after he left the gas station. And basically the cashier is trying to get Dean to bribe him. So he's like, you know, like, your buddy didn't pay for the booze or the smokes. Um, and then Dean's like, ugh, fine, and puts some bills down. And then the cashier's like, oh, actually, I was starting to remember that he took two packs. And Dean's like, okay, fine. And then after bribing him enough, he learns that Sam went north Route 71 out of town. 
and then Dean, like, grabs two candy bars without paying for them directly and then leaves. I was so fascinated by this because when the guy said, like, actually... I'm recalling it better now. He took two packs. I would have never gotten in my life that he was saying, like, give me more money. I would have just been like, this is the information he's giving me. (laughs) Literally. (laughs) Literally, I would have never connected those thoughts. I would have just stood there and be like, you have any more information other than he took two packs? (laughs) So when Dean, like, handed more money, I was like, oh, that's interesting. But yeah, that's yeah. literally my only commentary for this scene. <laughs> Love that. I mean, wait, okay, are we gonna, at what point are we gonna say what the situation was? Because I do think it's very hot girl moment of Meg to, like, go into a store, start chugging alcohol, and then throw the bottle at someone. Well, I, I think it's safe to say that, like, that portion of Sam, he was possessed. So we'll say that, like. Okay. Good for good for Meg, you know. Yeah. Go into a store, drink it, a la Cascor, I guess. Yeah, yeah. He went into a liquor store and and I drank, drank it. it. Good for him. And uh, well, have you ever smoked a cigarette? No. No. Okay, then let's drop this conversation. <laughs> have you? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, I mean, did you have anything you wanted to say about it? No, I was just, like, wondering, like, do you think Meg would be, like, a menthol-type person? Hmm. I don't know. My only thought there was that it was a crime that we didn't get to see Rachel Minor Meg smoke, because I know smoking kills, but also, like, (laughs) hi. (sighs) Yeah, Smoking kills, don't smoke, even though I have smoked in my life. And also considering taking up smoking because I want to buy a Zippo and I want to <laughs> use it for something. <laughs> like, I want to justify my Zippo purchase. Being so I am thinking, literally kills. Li- literally, I'm thinking of getting into tobacco. Like, as in, like, the big, like, cigars. And I, mm. like... Like I was I was doing like some like reading up about it and then like it hit me suddenly like right in the middle of doing that. I was like, what am I doing? I I was literally like I was having like a revelation, like you're literally going all in just so you can justify buying a zippo. Like other people literally buy like dolls and merch that they just display in their house for no reason. You can do this for a zippo as well. Like <laughs> Just say it's a supernatural related purchase and then you'll be fine. You don't have to smoke. But yeah. Again, if you want to if you want me to buy a zip, you can give us some money in our coffee. And put and Gray four- is not gonna use it to smoke, so you will not be responsible for lung cancer. Exactly. Just put uh, in the note portion of your coffee donation for Grace Zippo. Don't actually do that. Uh, we have said it last episode. We'll say it again. Don't actually do that. I I will spend my own money for my own Zippo. Anyway, they drive to a house, and the house is quite secure, or at least it looks like it is, because it has like cameras and like secure, you know, security stuff set up. But they knock at the door and they open it up and nothing happens and dean says like oh isn't it weird like wouldn't this guy have more security specifically he says like you'd think it have an alarm and then sam walks towards the side of the house and finds that the electricity or like the alarm setup has been um wrangled and hacked into and he goes, yeah, you would. Uh, which I thought was such a good line. Like, the response to, like, you'd think it'd have an alarm. And Sam going, yeah, you would. As being like, of, like we would think that. So, like, if I was responsible for this, I would disable it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hell yeah. Yep. Hell, hell yeah. yeah. As they head in, uh, the place is fucked up. Um, a lot of shattered glass and stuff. And then they get to a back room, and there is 
a corpse on the ground. Dean tells Sam to turn the lights on, and we see that it's some guy, and his throat is slit really hard, and Dean looks shocked, and Sam looks like he's having a terrible time, and he goes, Dean, I did this, and Dean goes like, we don't know that, and Sam's like, um, no, I mean, like, this is the only explanation, and Dean's going like, no, I, even if you did it, I'm sure you had a good reason, like, like, you know, self-defense, he was like a bad guy, you know, and Sam tells Dean that he needs his lockpick, and they open up the closet in the back of the room with a bunch of guns and symbols and stuff in it. And Dean goes like, oh, either this guy's a Unabomber, and then Sam goes, or a hunter. Fascinating that hunters' <laughs> closets look exactly the same as terrorists. How interesting. <laughs> Um, yeah, Sam goes, Dean, I think I killed a hunter. Ooh. And, ooh, and we see that there's a security camera, so Dean goes, let's find out. And we look at the tape, and it's just, Sam comes into the house, <laughs> he stumbles into this room, <laughs> like, beating the shit out of the sky. But, like, he looks really funny. Like, I something know. about the security like, tape he fight. He looks, he looks like an animal. Like, he looks like he's so big and lumbering. Like, yeah. He, he looks like, I don't know, like, because he's so big and he's just going at it at this guy. Like, the whole time I was like, this is so funny. Like, I was like, yeah. this is hilarious. And the only time, like, I'm actually quite... Ugh, about um, violence on screen. Like, it's just not something I particularly like watching. But, like, this entire time, I was like, this is so funny. And the only time I actually looked away was, like, at the throat slit moment. So, like, mm. that's saying a lot. Because I would have looked away. <laughs> this scene was so fucking funny. Like, I don't even know how to describe oh. it. You have to watch it. Like, he's just I literally, like he's standing there. He pushes the guy. And he, like... <laughs> monkey walks towards the guy and I was like, yeah. god damn. What Wait, is happening? No. He has like crab legs and his arms are out <laughs> like he's trying to scare off a bear but he is the bear. Like, <laughs> He's literally like doing those, um, you know, like those thigh Garther things that you wear when you work out. Like he's yeah. literally like a walking towards the guy like he's wearing that. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah, but unfortunately, Sam and Dean don't see the humor in the situation. <laughs> yeah, they do um, not. They yeah. are looking in distress. Yep. So, Sam, he is sitting down at the desk. He's He has, like, a little paper out. He's reading it, and Dean is, like, going around, like... How do you erase this? I need your help. And then Sam's just yeah, I lamenting. Yeah, this was the moment when I was. Oh yes, this was the moment when I was like, oh my god, this is Dean. Like, Dean, Sam, I maybe I like Dean sometimes. He's literally like Catherine Yumphries doing so much for the Dean girl community. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she is putting in so much work. But basically, like you, you can imagine the scene. It's Sam sitting and he. Is basically lamenting that I killed a guy, I broke in, I killed him, and this is his name. It's Steve Wendell. This is a letter from his daughter. He, you know, he's just emoting. And yeah. Dean is off the side, like going, there are hunters who will look for who killed this guy, so we need to cover our fucking tracks. So, how do we get mm -hmm. rid of this tape? And because Sam is not responding, Dean just picks up yeah. the computer and then smashes it to the floor and like stomps on it and he goes wipe your prints then we go yeah oh god the, the, this entire moment I was thinking like if I find out one of my 
siblings or close friends killed someone, would I do this? Yes, I, I like, would. I I I think I would. But like I don't know, like I, I, yeah, like Dean is stepping into that instinct, right? Like Dean in this mm-hmm. scene is stepping into that instinct of like I too would do whatever it takes to keep Should we cut that out? What if I get involved in a murder <laughs> case and uh like the police listen to our podcast and it's like Oh, this person said like they would um uh, <laughs> they cover would, up a murder. <laughs> they would cover up a murder. I'll I'll be Yeah. It's not a good look. But like yeah, like Dean is so Who interesting. Wouldn't? In this thing. Yeah, for a close friend. And like the thing is this is not like a clear cut like you know, like my friend is an evil person who killed someone out of cold blood. This is a like my this was not my person and if anything they probably need like a lot of psychological help first and foremost and they're mm-hmm. not gonna get that in person so like uh, you know it's like a yeah. no-brainer at that point but right ah uh, like yeah. dean in this scene is yeah. he's so he's such a big brother he's so protective mm-hmm. and i Yeah, I, I kind of love him <laughs> at this moment. He's he's slaying, as I like to say. Yeah, I think it's just that I feel like Sam and Dean are not often very relatable to me, just because their situations do not translate to my life. But like mm-hmm. this moment, I was like, yeah, okay, I I understand you, Dean. You're a real guy. Yeah. So they head into a new motel room. And Dean's saying, okay, we'll sleep here for a bit, and then we're gonna get the fuck out of here. And then he says, like, I know this is bad, but you've got to snap out of it, Sam. And Sam goes, like, well, I'm just supposed to get some sleep and leave in the morning? Like, Dean, I did murder. That's what I did. And Dean goes, like, um, maybe. Oh, <laughs> uh, like, maybe he was, like, a shapeshifter. It can't be murder, but it can also be some other creature. Come yeah, on, it's Sam. it's not murder. We don't do murder. It doesn't count when we kill monsters. Yeah. So, Sam goes, like, well, no, because he saw the tape and there was no eye shit. And then Dean goes, Okay, yeah, but it wasn't you, all right? Like, it, it might have been you, but it wasn't you. <laughs> I'm surprised Dean hasn't figured out the possession thing at this point. Or is yeah. he, like, so trusting that Sam that Sam is not possessed right now? And that also, like, if he says to Sam, like, you got possessed, that will scare Sam a bit more. So he's, like, keeping it to himself. I think... I also think it's possible that Dean suspects that this was actually Sam, though. Ooh! Hell yeah. Yeah, like, he hasn't thought of the possession thing, because he was, like... My brother just blacked out, and there's no supernatural reason. He just went out on a murder spree. Like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. (sighs) Oof. Yeah, and Sam goes, well, I think it was. I think maybe more than you know. And he goes, what the hell does that mean? And Sam says, like, for the last few weeks, I've been having these feelings. <laughs> not even gay feelings. Yeah, I'm literally <laughs> not even gay feelings. He says the feelings are rage and hate. Yeah, and, so like, maybe yes, gay yes, girl feelings. <laughs> yeah, so maybe those are gay feelings. <laughs> yes, girl. Literally and rage kill. and hate. Oh, uh, Yeah. He says, I can't stop it. It just gets worse. Day by day, it gets worse. And, like, Sam, you're just going through a faith crisis and having gay feelings. Like, that's normal. Like, calm down, dude. <laughs> Literally. Oh, I love rage and hate. So, <laughs> Dean goes, you never told me this. Which, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm just I'm just trying to think of I feel like all the times that Sam tells Dean you never told me this it's about Mary stuff right 
Yeah. Yeah. So I guess it's interesting that I I guess Sam doesn't have any secrets he can keep to Dean besides himself. Yeah. That's so. True. Yeah. Sam says, I didn't want to scare you. Um, and he's like, well, great, you did a great job on that one. (laughs) Yeah, Sam says, like, you know that the yellow-eyed demon has plans for me, and he's turned other children into killers before, too. Dean says, no one can control you, but you, sure, Dean. And also, it's your own fault if you die, because you don't fight. God, what a (laughs) man. (laughs) um and sam goes like it doesn't seem like that dean it feels like no matter what i do slowly but surely i'm just becoming who i'm meant to be (laughs) oh love this i love drama i love drama uh yeah sam says like you told me once yourself that i have to face up to who i am he's like i didn't mean this sam says it's still true you know that. Dad knew that, too. That's why he told you, if you ever came to this. And Dean's telling him to shut up. And Sam says, Dean, you promised him. You promised me. Ooh! Uh, and Dean's saying, like, no, there's got to be a way out. Come on. And Sam says, yeah, there is. And he takes out a gun and hands it to Dean. He says, I don't want to hurt anyone else. I don't want to hurt you. Dean says, like, you can fight this. And Sam, he's like, he's, his eyes are getting a little watery. Oh, this is such a good continuation from Houses of the Holy, where he's, like, halfway crying in every single scene. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. Um, He says, like, no, I can't do this forever. He says, here, you gotta do it. And, like, Dean won't take the gun. So Sam just takes his hand and, like, slams the gun into it, like, forcing Dean to hold it. And, like, he looks so, like, determined and fierce in that moment. And then after the gun's in Dean's hands, he suddenly looks, like, so young and scared. Like, his lip is wobbling. And, like, he does, like, a little nervous bounce. And it's it's good. It's good, because he's, like... Well, he's not, but if this was real, he'd be realizing, like, the gravity of the situation, and it's, ah, hello. And Dean says, you know, I've tried so hard to keep you safe. And Sam's, like, nodding, and, like, he, like, in a way that's, like, he thinks that this is a goodbye speech. And he says, like, I know. And he's, like, sort of waiting for Dean to shoot him, and he's, like, leaning forward. Like, he looks kind of hungry for it. In a way. Um, and, like, there's a moment of suspense that's not actually suspense. Because, obviously, Dean shakes his head. He's not gonna shoot his dad. Yeah. yeah. And he says, I can't. I'd rather die. And then he drops the gun on the bed. Ah! The thing is, like, my immediate thought in this moment was, like, sure, just drop this gun in this bed. I know, right? Your brother like, is obviously suicidal. And there's a yeah. gun, um, literally not even a foot away from his hand. I yeah. wonder what will happen. I <laughs> know, like, right? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, o- obviously that's not how this episode... Away. Yeah, obviously that's not how this episode pans out. But, like, if Dean just, like, walked away with that gun... Yeah. There would have been more of a fight, you know? Like, it, it, mm-hmm. it would have happened differently. Yeah, agreed. I guess, uh, I guess Dean's main thought is just that he really needs to get away from this situation, so he wasn't thinking that clearly. Or, I don't know, maybe he, I feel like it, uh, maybe he just doesn't want to cope with the fact that Sam would kill himself. Like, maybe he is hoping that Sam keeps telling Dean to do it because Sam can't do it himself, so he's thinking that Sam will be safe as long as he doesn't do it. I don't know. Or he's been in this mindset that he has to be the one who kills Sam for so long that he probably forgotten that Sam can just kill Sam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And obviously Sam picks up the gun 
And my first thought when he did that was like, in the motel room, someone's gonna have to clean that up, Sam. <laughs> Literally, you cannot what? die in a motel room. Like, think of Fucking the couple rude. who will show up the next day and find your body. Come on. Yeah, no, like, you, you need to go to the woods or something. Like, at least give the animals a meal out of it, dude. Like, <laughs> come on. Yeah, so Sam says, no, you'll live. And then he says, you'll live to regret this. And then he hits Dean with the gun and Dean blacks out. And, okay, so this is the moment that we realize yeah. that Sam is still is possessed. still possessed! Yes. And, you know oh, what's God. funny? Uh-huh. I didn't, I wasn't so clear on whether Meg is still there or is gonna come back. So I was yeah, like, same. the whole episode, I was thinking, like, until this point, I was thinking, I don't think Jared is acting well this episode. Like, I don't think, I think he's, like, acting too much. And, mm, yeah. like, the whole time I was thinking, like, this is so, he's acting so weirdly. Like, I, I maybe Jared, like, something was up with him this day and his acting was just off. And so when the reveal happened, like, he, he was actually possessed the entire time. I was like, is that, is that an acting, like, it was that, like, a conscious acting choice? And if so, good job, honestly. Yeah, I think... Jared Padalecki phrase. Uh -huh. Who would have thought? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> I think the, the, yeah, again, I didn't know for sure if it was Meg or Sam, uh, and I think I was mostly watching this like it was Sam, or I was reacting to it emotionally like it was Sam, because I yeah. think that if this was the actual situation Sam was in, he'd also, like, basically do all the same things. Um, but yeah, I think the main moments where I was like, huh, I feel like he's still possessed were all the moments where he was like, wait! I remember this! <laughs> like, mm, yeah, like, he was really overacting in those scenes. Yeah. And, like, it was, a mat it was like a matter of, is this like a TV show thing where the actor is overacting or is it like layers, you know? Right. But turns out it is layers, so. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, Dean blacks out, as was said earlier. And then he wakes up to someone knocking on the door insistently. Guy opens the door and says, You need to leave. Like, you're past the time. And someone is gonna use your room. And, like, they pan to a couple. And, like, all I was thinking of was, like, First off, are they not mm. gonna clean this room? Yeah. It's a much house, so probably not. I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, pre-COVID, everything was just up in the air. <laughs> Literally, no one was cleaning anything. You yeah. can do whatever you want. Yeah, people were just kissing sick people with tongue, you know. You know, every, everything was up for grabs. But yeah, uh... Dean asked, like, have you seen the guy who was with me? And the, and the manager was like, yeah, he went out mm. a little bit earlier and he took your car. Okay, wait, we should note the, like, the joke when it pants to the couple is, well, like, the woman is, like, yeah, he says, and like, has I'll a bet lot they of makeup do. on. And, yeah. like, you're supposed to think that she's a sex worker and it's not a good joke. Like, they didn't need it. I didn't really think that, but the transcript says like it is a hooker. So yeah, no, like this is like it, I like this is like the way that they costume and do like makeup for like sex worker characters, like on Les Mis and stuff. Like, oh uh, yeah, yeah, no, like at least I could tell immediately like that was what they were going for. Dean asks if he can use the guy's computer, and the guy's like, "Why would I let you use my computer?" And then we. Cut to Dean using the computer and the guy is in the back, like, counting stacks of money. So, good for them. Uh, <laughs> Dean says the, the that, like... The funniest fucking scene. He says, like, my son snuck out of the house and went to a Justin Timberlake <laughs> concert. 
And I'm starting to worry, like, he's diabetic, so he needs his insulin. Like, he's really, he's really uh, weaving this excuses. But, like, it's so funny because Sam ends up to be in Duluth, Minnesota, which I believe... <laughs> Is not a destination for a Justin Timberlake concert, and I, I was just, I just thought this scene was so funny. Like it is, and I yeah. just love that Dean chose like Justin Timberlake concert. Like I love that he's like, what, what are the kids into? Justin Timberlake, <laughs> literally. Yeah, and like at some point, someone on the other side of the phone says something, and Dean's like, "What? Um, oh yeah, Justin is quite the triple threat." So like the person on the phone was like, "Justin Timberlake, he's so hot," or something. <laughs> like literally. God, oh. I don't even know who Justin Timberlake is. <laughs> I, I know he. I know he. I did he that thing. Did so- Wait, did he Wait. do sexy back or no? Who was that? He, that's yeah, Backstreet yeah, yeah. He Boys. no Justin Timberlake also was had... in Backstreet Boys. No, 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 he like he also did sexy back, like the song. Wait, is it even by? No, no, no. It's by He's Justin bisexual? Timberlake. Sex... No, no, no. Sexy back. The song sexy back. <laughs> Wait, why did you say by? No, I said the song is by him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Timberlake bisexual confirmed. Yeah, no, it's an okay. exclusive scoop from. Oh my god! Wait, wait. Do you think Dean is actually a Justin Timberlake fan because Demon Dean does sexy back karaoke? <sighs> okay, can you remind me what sexy back is? And I want you to sing it with your heart out, like full on performance. <laughs> I just, I just want to hear it. Wait, 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 really, wait, wait. Never I'm mind, sure. never mind. Dean's song is I'm Too Sexy for My Shirt yeah, or whatever. That was his song. thing. Yeah, Yeah. no, Sexy Back is the one that goes like, I'm bringing Sexy Back. Them other boys don't know how to act, etc., etc. I'm not singing it with my heart. Especially <laughs> because there are no actual notes in it. He's just singing the same note over and over again. No, yeah, I recognize this song, yeah. 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 Okay, never mind. Well, Dean's not a Justin Timberlake fan. And, and like, apparently, we are not either. <laughs> yeah. I do not know anything about this man. I, oh, is he the yeah, guy I mean, who, like, did the thing sucks. with, like, the, with Janet At Jackson? At the Super Bowl, yep. Yeah, so, he sucks. Yeah, uh, okay. Oh, this guy sucks. Yeah. We're kicking him out of the LGBT community. <laughs> God, I need to make sure he's not actually bi, because that would do- oh I would God. be very we'll, upset. We'll, <laughs> Let's look at Justin Timberlake sexuality. <laughs> no. No. Okay, I'm not getting anything. But Pink Nudes has a story called Justin Timberlake declares himself an LGBT plus ally. Yeah. So we go to Minnesota, um, and we see Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Oh, yeah. Jo, like, looks like she's doing well. Like, I don't know. She looks healthy. I'm happy for her. Um, her she I like... has, like, some beach waves going on. Yeah, her yeah, yeah. bopping. Mm-hmm. She looks great. And, like, I like the long sleeve shirt she has on. I mean, she's in Minnesota, like, and this is probably around the winter, so she should probably have, like, more layers on. But, like, like go girl. Like, dress for the weather. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Um, so, Sam, who is not Sam, comes in, and, like, now that you know that he's not Sam, he, like, looks a lot more menacing, or, like, he's acting a lot weirder, and I don't know if that's just because I know or because there was a conscious acting choice made after, in scenes after the reveal. Uh, so, he comes in. And Joe's saying, like, sorry, we're closed. And Sam says, how about just one for the road? And Joe sees him uh, and greets him, gets him a beer, and asks how he found her. 
Ah, uh, Serge goes like, uh, it's kind of what we do, you know. Like, Meg is so, like, cosplaying being a hunter <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, and says that Dean couldn't make it. Joe asks why he's here, because they didn't part on the best of terms. And Sam says, like, that's why I'm here. And, like, he takes off his jacket, but, like, and I feel like normally you wouldn't think anything of it, but, like, like, they showed Joe, like, looking, like, oddly at the thing, and then you're like, ah, uh, ah, shit. So, uh, yeah, Sam says that he came here to, like, make up, and... Joe sees that there's a burn on his arm, and we don't see it very clearly, but when we see it later, it literally is just the letter Q. <laughs> Happy Pride Month! <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, Sam, she points it out, and he's like, oh no, I just ran in with a hot stove. When would Sam even be encountering a stove? It's not like he can cook in motels. I also wonder That's what Sam's true. cooking is like. I don't think Sam has ever touched a stove at this point. Right, which is why which is why he just touches stoves with his bare hands <laughs> in the bunker and no one ever taught him. That's exactly why. <laughs> yeah. He, like, just touches a raw, like, uh, unprotected uh, pots of heated chili. <laughs> yeah though I guess Dean had to have cooked for him before like was there a stove in the SpaghettiOs probably um, stuff yeah okay so there are some stoves in their lives uh so Sam goes like look I know how you feel about my dad and I can't say I blame you he was obsessed consumed with hunting and he didn't care who got caught in the crossfire so true. I can't believe it's not Sam saying this. And he says, and I guess that included your dad. But that was my father. That's not me. Why is this even fucking relevant, Sam? How is I'm not like that even relevant to your apology? <laughs> well, it's not him. I know it's one. not him. Okay, fine. Meg, but also you're really like bad at this. <laughs> They also, like, this scene, like, it, like, it's, it's, you know, it does a good job of making you, like, hate this character. You know, like, oh, yeah. this character's an asshole. Yeah. So, job well done. Yeah. And Joe asks, what about Dean? And Santa goes, well, Dean's more like my father than I am, but... And then he, like, sees... Joe's face. Okay, wait, so why is Joe asking this? Just like, uh, is Dean a good guy because I still think he's hot? Kind of no, question. No, I think this question was like, you're saying that to me, but does your brother even like say oh, the yeah. same sentiment? Right, like, is he gonna apologize to me too? Yeah, um, okay, right, and then Meg starts really not acting like Sam. Like, he, like, does this laugh, and he's going like, oh, wow, you're, like, really hung up on him, right? Too bad. Because, see, Dean, he likes you, sure, but not in the way you'd want. I mean, maybe he's kind of, like, a little sister, you know, but romance, that's just out of the question. And he, like, does this, like, mean laugh, and he's like, he thinks you're kind of a schoolgirl, you know? What was you, what were you gonna say? I was like literally mean girls era. <laughs> yeah, and it's I don't like the the like he he's acting very unnatural in this scene. I suppose perhaps even supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. like I think Meg like remembers that she's supposed to be Sam and she, like pulls it back a little. I goes like I'm not trying to hurt you, Joe. And then, and then Sam says, I'm telling you because I care. And then, ugh. And then he, like, puts his hand over hers, like, and, like, you can tell it's a tight grip. And he says, I mean it. I care about you a lot. And Joe asks Sam what's going on. 
and she tries to pull away, but he won't let go. And he says, I can be more to you, Joe. Uh, what is, what is even the point of this? What is even the point of this? Like, I also wonder that because... Because we find out later that he's just there, she's just there for like, bait, for to be like made. to yeah. get Dean to come here and then shoot Sam to stop him from killing Joe. Like, none of this shit was necessary. Like, Meg could have just come in, knocked Joe out, and tied her to a pole. No, exactly. I think this is just, like, to show that Meg is, quote, having fun, you know? Yeah. Ugh. Well, I don't like Meg's definition of fun. Yeah, and maybe it's just to cue us in that it's Meg at all, or, like, give us hints that it's Meg, because I feel like... At least, you know, in Shadow, she does a sexual assault. I feel like they're, like, making it part of her character or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... Joe tells Sam to leave, and he says okay and starts to go away, but when she turns away, like, he, like, attacks her and, like, grabs her, and, like, she, like, she still thinks he's Sam right now, which I think is the saddest part of the situation, like... At, like, yeah, no, like, they're, like, near the end of the fight, like, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, no, it's, like, bad, like, it seems like he's, like, getting her into position to rape her, and she's screaming, like, Sam, no, please. Like, oh, God, like, this sucks for Joe, this sucks so bad for Joe! Like, uh, I don't know, and it's not, I guess, like, she and Sam weren't, like, besties before this. Yeah. And, like... Like, she generally thought that Dean was kind of misogynistic and probably thought that Sam was also misogynistic as an offshoot, but, like, she trusted him enough to let him use her as bait in No Exit and, like, generally probably thought he was, like, a guy to be trusted in, like, I don't know, it just sucks that, like, this is happening and she still thinks it's him and it's, ugh, it just has to hurt. If I do wonder, like, how they proceed with yeah, Sam and Joe. And yeah, I, I have no idea. Look I genuinely have anymore. no idea. I... Because, like, the only thing I remember about Joe was it's, like, season four onwards. I don't know anything about what happens in season two and three to Joe. Mm -hmm. So, who knows? You know? Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Um, so... He knocks her out by, like, slamming her forehead into the bar. And he says, like, it didn't have to be this way. Or maybe it did. And, like, it's just, it's just he does it really creepily because he's really close to her face and stroking her hair. And, like, like, why, though? Like, why? <laughs> yeah. So that's the end of that scene. We, Joe wakes up. And she's being tied to a pole. And it's we're back to the really bad slow-mo for a little bit. Uh -huh. And this is like the start of Sam taunting Joe about or, what yeah. happened with her dad. So, like, at first... Uh, uh, Joe immediately knows at this point, like, this is not Sam. Like, she says immediately, as soon as yeah. she wakes up, like, you're not Sam. I wonder what but, part clued her in. Like, because she still thought it was him up until the knockout. No, I think, like, at that point, she was like, huh, well, this, this person is not really acting like Sam. Mm. Yeah. But, like, I guess, like, because she, it's like, she's screaming, so like, what else right. would you scream at that moment? That's but, true. Yeah. Uh, I mean, then I guess I wonder at what earlier point she knew it wasn't him. 
maybe it's like connect the dots like he has a weird yeah, symbol yeah. on his arm right, right and he's acting weird and it's like well yeah. maybe this guy's not and also guy. he's trying to hit on me by first saying that his brother views me as a sister like sam hasn't read the game infiltrating the secret society of pickup <laughs> artists <laughs> like <laughs> oof yeah, no, the, the negging tactics that Meg used there were like, like, come on. Anyway, uh, Joe basically reveals that John and Bill, her dad, were like setting a trap up somewhere in California for some monster. And that her dad was bait and John was in hiding, but John like stepped in too early and revealed the whole plan and the monster killed Bill. And Sam's like, no, you got that wrong. Uh, you don't even know the truth. Your mom probably doesn't even know the truth. And he says like, the monster didn't kill him. It just hurt him real bad to the point that he was holding his insides in his hands and he was Jeez. gurgling blood and he was just praying to see you and your mom one more time. So John shot him, put him out of his misery like a sick dog. Whew. Joe in denial says like you're lying. She's crying. Yeah, God. And Sam says, I'm not. It's true. My daddy shot your daddy in the head. Hell yeah! What? It's such an iconic line. It is and an iconic it's line. It's delivered, like, yeah, I love the way it's delivered, all sing-songy. Joe, like, asks, like, why are you doing this to me? And Sam says, because, like, a father, like, daughter, I'm using you as bait. And then... He starts, like, tying her mouth up when Dean busts into the door. And yeah. he's holding a gun up at Sam. And Sam immediately changes. Like, uh -huh. just it's a really snap. good scene where it's you so see good. him, like, transfer so to Sam mode. Yeah. And he, like... Because the entire Joe scene, he was acting so different. And then suddenly uh -huh. it's like, I told you to shoot me, Dean. And <laughs> yeah. that, that's my Sam voice. <laughs> oh, right. You know uh, what I'm mad about? I'm mad that Jared Padalecki didn't put on the Meg sexy voice when he was being regular Meg. Like, I think that he should have. I think <laughs> that it's misogynistic to not. The like, uh, the like, a little flowy. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Sam is saying like, I told you to kill me. You would have done me a favor. Shoot me. I would kill Joe if you don't kill me. And Dean just puts down his gun. And Sam approaches him and says like, what's wrong with you? You're so scared of being alone that you'd rather let Joe die? Ooh! Ah! And then... I see and then, Dean turns around and splashes some with holy water. And it, you know, it burns him up and shit. So, Dean mm -hmm. finally figures out that this is a demon. Sam does the black eyes thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, more holy water. Sam <laughs> literally just jumps out a window. Good for him. <laughs> he literally just, he yeah. literally just goes straight at the window and jumps out of it. And then yeah, Dean I went. mean, I think Meg just really likes jumping out of windows. Honestly, I'm really pissed that they didn't do the thing where it's like after like after like Meg Masters' body fell out of the window, all her bones are broken and as soon as Meg gets exercised she'll die. But like Sam's completely fine after Meg gets <laughs> exercised. No, I want every bone in his body to be broken. <laughs> yeah anyway uh, Dean unties Joe and then jumps out of the window after Sam but right before that like Joe screams he was possessed and then Dean just looks at her and runs what a loser you could have just said well, yeah. yeah I know he's such a fucking dick yeah like it, you aren't wasting any time if you say yes while you're running 
I just, I don't, it just sucks because, like, like, oh, he shows up and, like, jo first Joe knows that Dean wouldn't even, like, shoot Sam in the foot to prevent her from dying. <laughs> like, <laughs> literally shoot no. him in, like, the pinky. Yeah, like, literally he could have just thrown something at him. Honestly, that whole scene, like, I know it was supposed to be high drama or whatever, but, like, literally, like, uh-oh, Dean, I'm gonna kill her, you better shoot me! Oh no, <laughs> like, literally at any point, you could have just thrown something at Sam and he, and, like, gotten Cho out. Like, I don't know, it was, it was not even a good setup as an ultimatum. And, but also the fact that Dean does nothing <laughs> is wild. But yeah, Joe knows that Dean wouldn't even shoot Sam in the foot to save her entire life. The last time she saw Dean, Dean was using her as bait. And also earlier, she got, like, basically sexually assaulted by a ghost. And now, like, this is happening to her again and Dean's, like, completely ignoring her. And, like, all, like, uh, like the only thing he did was untie her. Like, this sucks for Joe. This sucks so bad. And Dean's a yeah. dick. So, we're in a warehouse, um, where we're, we're basically getting a scene from Tom and Cherry. <laughs> so... <laughs> this entire scene is exposition. Like, nothing happens. They point guns yeah. at each other, and, like, the moment <laughs> you think someone is gonna take a shot, they just don't, and it's like, okay, cool, yeah. so we're literally just here to talk. And I mean, uh -huh. it's a fine to just be here to talk, but, like, can we get some it action, please? kind of comical. Please. Can please. we get some action, like, please? Can you... Yeah. So, they're, like, in the warehouse, and they're both, like, trying to go at each other. They all have guns. And they're, like, walking around on tiptoes, like, backwards, peeking around corners and stuff. Um, so, Dean's questioning Sam, uh, and asking who the demon is. Um, and there's, like, Meg just says, I've got lost lots of names. And... Uh, says, like, you should have seen your face when you thought he murdered that guy. Pathetic. So fucking true. Pathetic. Dean asks why Meg didn't kill him. Oh, um, but she says, like, no, that would have been too easy. This was a test. I wanted to see if I could push you far enough to waste Sam. And then should have known you wouldn't have the sack. Do people say that instead of balls? I mean, it's like they're allowed to say balls in Supernatural. Yeah, like Bobby says balls, right? Yeah. As like a swear. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well. Um, and Dean says, like, you're gonna pay hell for this. And Meg says, how? You can't hurt me. Not without hurting your little brother. And just at that, Dean just puts the gun away. He just puts the gun away, and he just takes out the flask of holy water instead, and it, it does make me emo. Uh, and yeah, Meg says, I think you're gonna die, Dean. You and every other hunter I could find. One look at Sam's dewy, sensitive eyes, they'll let me right in their door. So fucking true, one look at Sam's dewy, sensitive eyes. <laughs> me too. Um, so, uh, so Meg gets out of the warehouse, uh, and they're, like, on this dock, like, overlooking, like, a bunch of water near a bridge, and Meg just shoots Dean in the shoulder, and he falls right into the water, um, and she, like, looks over to where Dean fell, and then does, like, a little smirk. And it is very fun seeing Meg's smirk on Sam's face. We go to Joe, who's walking around uh, the water area. I don't know, is this a river? This is not a river, this is a lake. Yeah. yeah. We, we get Joe, who's walking around through the docks, and she's calling Dean, and Dean, mm -hmm. Dean's phone, for some reason, was not broken in this <laughs> dip into the water. 
but instead well, is... We're Gen Zers, you know? Like, flip phones are strong. Our iPhones, like, need, like, cry and scream yeah. if they touch a little bit of water. Yeah, but, uh, his, like, voicemail rings up, and so she finds him. And for some reason, he is in the docks, not in the middle of the water. And he's yeah. unconscious, too. Why is he here? Maybe he swam and then passed out. I mean, perhaps. But, uh, Joe picks him up, and the is like, yeah. where's Sam? And Joe says, basically, I don't know. Let's patch you up. And then they go to the roadhouse. No, just the, the, the Minnesota bar. Is this, this is a different place? This is not the roadhouse. The roadhouse isn't in Minnesota. It's in, like, Nevada or something, right? Hmm. Well, because that makes remember, sense. Remember, Joe left. Joe left home, so she's been yeah, hunting so and working, working jobs around all around the, the country. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, she proceeds to go to the bar, and uh, like Dean is like drinking whiskey as Joe mm-hmm. is digging out the bullet from his shoulder, and like he yeah. goes, "Ugh!" and Joe goes, "Don't be a baby." Love that. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah. And, you know, they do the whole, like, patching up thing. And at some point, Dean says, you're a butcher. And Joe just looks at him like, wow, the audacity of this guy. And says, I know. you're welcome. She literally should have left him there to die. <laughs> <laughs> literally leave him there to die. Uh, Joe makes conversation, asks how he knew Sam was possessed. And Dean basically says, like, I didn't. I just knew that it wasn't him. Yeah. And which, Joe asks, Okay, Dean. And you didn't even <laughs> shoot him in the fucking foot to save Joe's life. All right. Joe asks, like, I know demons lie, but can they also tell the truth? And Dean, probably reminiscing about what the demon said about John in mm-hmm. uh Crossroad Blue says, like, yeah, I guess they tell the the truth sometimes when they know it'll fuck you up. Why do you ask? Do you think Meg learned about Bill's death by talking to John in hell? Maybe. Or maybe this is, like, because the way they talk about it, like, they were trapping a hell spawn, right? They're trapping... Oh, It's implied that it's a demon. So it's probably, like, running around in demon, um, I don't know. newsletters (laughs) newsletters <laughs> like yeah they, they they have an email and they send it out every month to update you on the happenings yeah okay that makes sense they have a Kofi account <laughs> and it's like pay us three dollars each month and we will send out an email about all the hunters that we have killed so far <laughs> joe's like oh okay the Oh, fuck and ask where Sam is gonna head to next and Sa- Dean says like nearest hunter is in South Dakota so I guess he's going there so yeah it's they're done very far from Minnesota I don't know how is they it? drive that fast I think so because Minnesota is just really up north because it's very cold let me actually check the drive time from Minnesota to South Dakota also, we we learned that Bobby lives in South Dakota. I don't think I knew what state he was in before. It's an eight-hour drive. Ooh. Not that bad. Yeah, not that bad, but, like, Dean needs his four hours of sleep. I remember one time I was writing a fic, and I was like, I want to get Cass to go to, um, what's this? That cold place that's in the Midwest. I want him to get in Missoula, Montana. Like, I want him to end up in Missoula. Because, like, convoluted reason. I want him to be in Missoula. And, like, I looked up the time between, like, Kansas to Missoula. And it was, like, 24 hours or something. And I was like, oh, okay. Cool. (laughs) Wait, that seems too... Are you sure? That seems too long. Like, it's not... Okay, let me look up. Uh, Lebanon to Missoula. Okay, no, you're right. I'm getting... Yeah, no, it is very long. My god. 
Yeah, no, it's a 17-hour drive. Anyway, like, Dean heads out, and Joe's like, okay, let's go! But Dean says, uh, you're not coming with me. If you try to follow me, I will tie you up? <sighs> this is like, yep. like I get I, that he probably honestly, doesn't know. I hope he dies. <laughs> I get that yeah. he probably doesn't know what happened prior to the tying up. But like, the mere fact that she got tied up, like, don't you think that you're probably like scaring the hell out of Joe by saying like, yeah. if you don't do this, I'm gonna die. Like, oh my god, Dean. But yeah, right. basically he says like, this is my fight. I'm not gonna get your blood on my hands. And oh god, I hope he dies for real. Honestly, I think my note when he said that was, I think he should get 20 misogyny points for that. <laughs> <laughs> He's so. Oh, I hate, I hate him. Anyway, uh, they like linger on Joe for a while, and as Deed walks out, she goes, "Wait," and then she throws him like some pain reliever, and goes like, "That'll help with the pain." And like this kind mm. of like puts Dean a little bit like out of it. Not not like that. Like as in like he's like a bit taken aback that like, oh, she's not like trying to get, she's not trying to go with me. She's just giving mm. me this painkiller. That's quite nice, or at least that's how I read the situation. Like he's thinking like, yeah, oh that's nice, but she guess uh he says like thanks. I'll call you later, okay? And we linger on Joe, and as Dean goes off into the world joe goes no you won't so true. and i was like what are they are they trying to do like a pining situation here i think they are i mean yeah no the i mean meg's whole speech to joe about how dean doesn't view her as an equal was also clearly going in that direction and, you know, Dean I, saying all this just confirms that for Joe. I think this is a good scene, actually. Like... Yeah, I quite liked it. Yeah, like, you know, like, Joe is perhaps pining for Dean. But, like, I guess I didn't really read it that way. It's more like... Well, I guess it is. Whatever. Yeah, I, I just I thought also... it was an interesting... Oh, okay, go on. I think, yeah, no, but I get what you mean by not reading it that way, because it's also just a general, like, these guys, like, come into my life, fuck it up, and then don't give me any follow-up, and, like, it sucks, and I just don't have any friends, and I feel like they kind of are the closer things that I have to friends in my life, and, like, that sucks. Like, yeah. I feel like you can also read it like that. I, I yeah. read it as, you know that poem... That's like for M. The title is for M. I forgot who wrote it. Oh, like the it was like, leave, like leave your scarf behind in my life one. Yeah, like like linger in the door before you leave. Leave your mm -hmm. scarf behind and come back later for it. Like, I I read this scene as that. Like you won't even, you won't even give me like a goodbye wave. Like you won't even like, you know, you won't even look mm -hmm. back. At me to say okay bye before you exit the door and like yeah i feel that because uh that is something you look for when other people show up in your life you're like well at least like turn around and acknowledge that you're leaving or something but, like dean yeah. is i think this is kind of like showing the way like the winchesters are so absorbed in their problems mm -hmm. and so absorbed in uh, the happenings in their internal life that they mm -hmm. tend to ignore like other people around them yeah yeah no i am really glad that we ended on joe you know because yeah in no exit we like ended on dean after dean. the reveal that john got bill killed 
So, like, I'm glad that they're, like, saying, like, no, this is, like, about Joe. Like, this is Joe's story, this bit of this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Also, oh, did you- I I really thought for a second when she gave him the pills that she was gonna have him- He was gonna poison him. And it was gonna be, like, a sleeping pill or something, and then she would, like, drag him unconscious into the car and start driving to South Dakota. (laughs) Oh, but alas- Alas, it's not what happened. Yeah. I, I really like this scene, and I think it humanizes Joe. And, like, I don't even see it as particularly romantic, even. I think I've said this mm-hmm. before. Like, when they first met, I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. And, um, like, I kind of shipped them, I guess, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. Now that has kind of faded. It's just more like, this is like a person in their life. And someone that they allegedly yeah. care about. But look at how they treat her. And look mm-hmm. at how they leave other people in their life behind. Yeah. It's making me so sad. Uh, we don't see it any more of Joe the rest of this episode, right? Yeah. I don't think Which so, Which makes yeah. me sad. Like, I thought maybe they should at least, like, circle back with her and be like... We got the demon now. Are you doing okay? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I hope, like, Bobby calls her. Yeah. And I also hope that Joe has someone to talk to. Is there? Is it even ever established that Bobby is, like, sweet on Joe? Like, I know him um, and Ellen are a ship in the Supernatural fandom. I don't really know yeah. the particulars of their relationship. Yeah. yeah. It's like a throuple like, situation. Yes. <laughs> Bobby Rufus Ellen. Bobby oh, Rufus Ellen. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's like their throuple situation. Good for them. Good for them. Yeah, I mean Oh, uh, I guess in the family in the family picture, like it seems like Bobby and Joe are. They friends, they know at each least. other. Yeah. Yeah, so Hopefully he does sort of view her in a father figure way. I hope he calls her. Yeah, me too. I hope that Joe has someone to talk to after this, because it's a terrible situation, and I feel like she probably wouldn't feel that comfortable telling Ellen about it, because she doesn't want Ellen to get overprotective. So I guess, like, she could talk to Ash, maybe, but I don't know if he's the right one to debrief (laughs) after this. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. hope she has more friends. Yeah. Go have friends, Joe. Yeah. A have girlfriend, even, will... if you're feeling yeah. like it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think, I think I've think i read, like, an Eileen x Joe fic. Go find Eileen. I think Eileen and Joe would, uh, what's the term? Hit it off. Mm-hmm. Agreed. We've lingered and on this for could... so long, we need yeah, to fucking no. move on. Joe deserves it. <laughs> but yes. Joe deserves what? The what have we dedicated? Pod like, episode to be literally about literally just literally the last twenty minutes of this episode. It's just us talking about Joe, and then we go, oh, don't really want to talk about anything else. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So Dean is calling Sam and apparently okay so I guess we cut to Sam and what he's cutting off Bobby's phone line yeah like I think Dean is calling Bobby and Sam like Uh, just nips it and it's actually a pretty cool scene and Dean goes like damn it and we see Sam going into Bobby's house yeah and Bobby, like, opens, and he seems really happy to see Sam, uh, and he lets him in, and Sam's, like, quite cautious when he enters and keeps looking up at the ceiling, because, like, you know, Meg recalls when she got Devil's Trapped last time she was in here. So, yeah, Bobby asks what's up, asks where Dean is, and Sam says, hold up somewhere with a girl and a 12 pack it's usually a six pack right i hope this imaginary dean is sharing and that's why it's a 12 pack like six for each of them 
Uh, <laughs> and yeah, and Bali goes into the back room and he says the most inane sentence, which is, oh yeah, is she pretty? <laughs> And I'm gonna believe with all my heart that this is just him stalling for time. Cause what is the question? As he literally like pours like a drop of holy water into the beer. Literally go Bobby. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's great. Yeah. Um and Meg loves the drama. So like she lets Sam's eyes go over black for a moment. As, like, she says, like, if you ask me, he's in way over his head. <laughs> Love that. Do you think demons have exhibitionist kinks relating to their <laughs> eyes? <laughs> like, ooh, flashing my black eyes in public. Bobby hands Sam a beer and says, it's good to see you. And he says to John, girl, why? <laughs> Literally. And... Well, I mean, it makes sense, because the last time we see him was yeah. in episode one, right? Mm-hmm. Wait, but they were in Bobby's house in episode two. So, like, they spent that entire era of their life post John death mm-hmm. in Bobby's house. So why is yeah. Bobby now being like, oh, let's give your dad to us? Come on, Bobby. <laughs> Yeah, come on, Bobby. Yeah, and Sam says to Dad. And then Meg takes a sip of the beer and then suddenly, like, starts choking and, like, there's, like, and, like, gagging and, like, I think, like, her voice is, like, it's different. Like, it sounds like half to or hoarse. something. Very yeah. Yeah. And, like, she says, what did you do? Bobby says, like, a little holy water in the beer. And then he says, don't try to con a con man. And then knocks Sam out. Every Okay, everyone in Supernatural goes unconscious when they get, like, punched once in the face. Is this how being unconscious works? Is it that easy? To be unconscious? Yeah, well, like you get punched in, a, in the face. Okay, wow. Okay. Surprisingly, I have not been punched in the face. <laughs> I think I deserve it, honestly. I don't know how people hold their fists back. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Oh well. I guess if I if I ever get punched in the face, I'll like come back and we'll, tell we'll, you all we'll if find I passed out. out or not. Look, uh Sam wakes up and he's tied to a chair. He's under the devil's trap, and it's Dean and Bobby looking at him, and uh, <laughs> this is like Sam says, like, "Wow, Dean, back from the dead, getting to be a regular thing for you, isn't it? Like a cockroach." And I, I a fucking cockroach. adore that. He's literally like a fucking cockroach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, like Dean threatens violence, and Sam says, "Well, I'm still in Sam's body, so you won't hurt me." But, like, Dean throws holy water at Sam, and Sam literally, like, does the whole, why, as he sizzles up. And then, uh, Sam says, Yeah, does like, that really not hurt the vessel? Because we've seen that holy water, what, like, burns burn. through, yeah. like, Glows. someone's shirt. So, like, surely, like, his skin must be getting burned, too. Yeah, well, we've talked about this, but we've established that the shirt becomes demonic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Sam, like, threatens that, well, the demon, Meg, threatens that he'll mm-hmm. bite Sam's tongue off if Dean doesn't stop. But, like, Dean just goes, well, Bobby, lead the stage. And Bobby starts reading the incantation for exorcism. Sam just like starts laughing and reveals that he's got a new trick. Wait, uh, I think did you skip over the part where Dean says like, "Oh, whatever bitch boy master plan you demons are cooking up." 
Love that. Okay. Well, but basically Dean's saying, like, whatever, like, grand plan you your, you demons are doing, like, I'm going to kill all of you first. And, like, Meg laughs and says, like, oh, you think that's what this is about? Like, I don't care about that. So, you know that this is a personal vendetta situation rather than a season two overarching plot situation. Yeah. We cannot get overarching plot. That's season- episode 14. Are you insane? <laughs> episode 14, we get overarching plot. Come on. But, uh, Sam, well, Meg reveals that uh, there's a new trick in town, which is uh, she can't get exercised out of the body. It's revealed that the burn Joe saw earlier was uh, like a spell basically to keep a demon inside a body. So uh, the room starts shaking and like there's like a fireplace bes- behind them and it like lights the fuck up and the mm-hmm. ceiling cracks. Everything is being destroyed and the demon trap gets cracked open. So Meg is now in full Hell flower, yeah. and she blasts Bobby to the side of the room and starts going after Dean. She starts hitting him, right? So they're, like, at the mm-hmm. corner of the room, and she's holding him down. So, like, Sam says, well, Meg says that, mm-hmm. um, like, she's been in hell. And that hell is, like, hell, <laughs> hell. even for <laughs> demons. She's so I, I think we discussed this in the podcast before, but this is the first mm. revelation in Supernatural that like demons also don't like hell, right? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. she describes it as a prison made of bone and flesh and blood and fear. I love that. Yeah. It's like I love oh, the concept of hell as like something organic. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're inside a being. And you're churning over there. Ah, oh, it's so good. Mm-hmm. And this is when Meg reveals, like, you sent me back there. And Dean goes, Meg. <laughs> <laughs> Love him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Meg says, not anymore. Now I'm Sam. And I also saw your dad in hell. And, uh... What I was selling myself down there was that one day I'll climb up here and fucking torture the hell out of you. Uh, yes. And she says, this is the part of the episode where I kind of got annoyed. Because I was like, this is this is supposed to be Sam's episode. <laughs> yeah, it is. Stop. Stop being like, oh, Dean is so sad, dude. So, he feels worthless. And it's like, shut up. This is literally not his episode. Yeah, I... Right, but it just it feels a lot like the season one finale where it's supposed to be about Sam and then either Azazel or Meg corners Dean and just says a bunch of character theses about him instead of like doing anything interesting. Literally. But basically what she says is, whatever I will do to torture you, what you're doing to yourself is worse. Because you're worthless, you couldn't save your dad, and you probably won't be able to save Sam. They've been better off without you. As Meg finally prepares to deal the final blow, Bobby comes up and burns the little symbol in the arm yeah, and he burns Meg. the cue off homophobia. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Meg gets out of Sam's body, a la black smoke. And mm-hmm. Sam falls over, goes, Did I miss anything? And Dean <laughs> love him. punches him in the face. So Sam, Sam's just literally just sitting there, like, What the hell what? is yeah. happening? What the fuck? Why did Dean literally just punch me right now? Like, it's yeah. revealed a little bit later that he was awake for some of it, you know? Like, yeah. uh-huh. he was up for some stuff. But, like, yeah. it would, like, in this moment, I was, I was, I found it so funny that he was like, 
what the hell is happening? I have no recollection of anything in the past week. And Dean just goes, boom. Like, you know, I thought that was quite yeah. funny. Yeah. Why did Dean do it? Like, is it just like, I'm so relieved that you're okay and I'm angry that, like, you didn't go on this emotional journey with me? I think it's the feeling of combination relief and also, like, to get the adrenaline off his body, you know? Because it's yeah. like, he's still in fight mode and he's thinking, like, mm-hmm. I'm finding something that it, that's in Sam's body. So I'm basically fighting yeah. Sam. So. Okay, yeah. Well, that was mean of Dean. <laughs> kind of mean. So, we uh, cut to a few moments later and Sam and Dean both have ice packs and... They're doing what Sam and Dean do to Bond, which is telling each other that they look like crap. And Bobby comes in and says, like, have you ever heard of a hunter named Steve Wandell? Like, he got murdered in his own house. And then he says, like, meaningfully, like, you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? And Dean says, like, nope, never heard of the guy. Sam seems less willing to acquiesce, but Bobby says, like, good, because his friends are looking for someone to pin this on, so you gotta stay out of trouble. And Dean says that they should head out, and Bobby gives each of them a charm that will fend off possession. He says this will stop it from getting back up in ya. And Dean says that sounds vaguely dirty, but thanks. Like, uh, I don't know. There's, like, another joke like this later. Yeah, in there's episode, another joke later. Let's discuss it when that happens. Hey, yeah. Yeah, Bobby says, like, you be careful now. Sam says you too. And I didn't notice this, but the transcript says that he smiles at Bobby, but Bobby doesn't smile back. Bobby. That's mean, but also, I guess it's indirect. You you are looking at the face of... The same face of the being that cracked your entire ceiling. I don't know how you're gonna fix your house after this, dude. He's got God. magic house healing powers. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, Dean tosses, like, his ice pack back to Bobby. Oh, the ice pack is, like, cloth around, like, a, like a cold beer, like, can, by the way. Yeah, so he it's tosses not. it. It's not! Is it not? It's an actual ice pack! No, there was like a can in there! No, that's just how ice packs look like! They look like cans? They have a little... Top. Yeah, like you pop that open put ice in there. Huh. Okay, I guess I'm more used to the bag version. And apparently Bobby smiles at Dean, but he didn't smile at Sam. And this is why the Sam girls don't care about Bobby. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. When he, when Sam entered and Bobby was so happy, I was like, oh, Bobby loves Sam. And then when it was revealed that he was like doing that to be amicable because he's gonna... He knows I that know. this is a demon. I was like, oh. Right, if he thought it was actually Sam, he would have just been like, what do you want? <laughs> what do you want from me? Anyway, oh, we're back in the Impala. It's night. And REO Speedwagon is playing in the car. Fun yeah. stuff. Dean Joe. And yeah, hashtag Dean Joe moment. And... Sam reveals that he was awake for some of the possession and that he watched himself kill the hunter that died. And he saw the light go out of his eyes. Hell yeah. (laughs) I'm glad he wasn't awake for the Joe thing. Yeah. And he says, like, he almost carved up Joe, too. So maybe he was awake for that part, but not the other parts, which... I guess, like, good for him. But yeah. he says, like, no matter what I did, you wouldn't shoot. And Dean says, like, mm-hmm. of course, I mean, it wasn't you. And Sam says, this time, yeah. But next time, Dean says, Dad said I would have to kill you if I can't save you. I'm going to save you. So. 
And the episode should have just fucking ended there. <laughs> yeah. Just end the episode here. Well, yeah, there's nothing that happens after this. <laughs> yeah. No, but Dean says, Dean, like, starts, like, giggling to himself. And Sam's like, oh, what are you laughing about? And then Dean says, like, you had a full-on girl inside you for, like, a whole week. And then it goes, that's pretty naughty. And what? they laugh. <laughs> and the episode ends. <laughs> no, because, like, what? I guess they're doing the whole... I guess they're doing the whole, like, possession is akin to... Like, they, they keep on joking that possession is akin to sex. Yes. And it's like... <sighs> uh-huh. uh, yeah. Have we and considered... Like, the, the part where the, the consent part of the sex where if yeah. possession is akin have to sex considered... and it's usually rape. Have we considered the implications... Have we considered the meaning behind this jokes? And it's just, I uh, the thing is, I never really figure out whether they take this aspect of possession seriously. You know? Yeah. I I I don't recall. Like, I feel like the only time they actually take possession seriously is Jimmy with. Sam and Lucifer mm. like they actually but that's less the possession and more the torture in the cage yeah. you know right I think I think with Jimmy and Cass they do an okay job I mean I think it's actually a good job but you know mm. it's something they revisit and they do well and with Nick and Lucifer that one is interesting but I hate Nick so mm. die. Uh, yeah, and like I just I I can't recall a specific line or moment in Supernatural where they take this idea of possession being equal to sex and run with it and actually do something about it that isn't just isn't it so funny, you know, like actually take mm-hmm. it seriously and take the implications seriously. Kind of a yeah. missed opportunity, I feel like. Yeah. Because I feel like they did do it, do like demons and sex and consent in Crossroad Blues in regards to like the consent in like the kiss of the demon deal. Yeah. So, but yeah, we don't see it in like possession, which seems like a bigger violation. So, yeah, it's mm-hmm. odd. Yeah. Anyway, Crystal, what did you think about this episode? Uh, I wish that that Joe thing had not happened or at least they like I I don't know if they changed the tone of it a bit or actually addressed it further but like everything else was fairly delicious Uh, for me my only complaint is that even for a Sam episode Mm -hmm. it's barely a Sam episode you know what I mean like yeah I just I wish there was more Sam yeah and uh, that that's you know it's a complaint we have often so <laughs> uh-huh yeah i wish there was more sam i wish yeah. that no actually that's it pretty much like okay. what you said yeah. and the sam yeah. thing but the rest of the episode i was genuinely cheering like watching this i was mm-hmm. incredibly entertained so yeah. i don't the i don't know drama. how people listen to our podcast do they like watch the episode then listen to the podcast? Do they just listen to the podcast? Do they watch episodes after we <laughs> listen to the podcast? I don't know. Who knows how people listen to our podcast? But like, I would say that this is an episode worth revisiting and watching. Like, actually, I think it it's like it has like good thesis statements for Sam and Dean. Yeah. At this moment in time. Right. I think the issue with season two is that Sam's plot is so directly tied into Dean's storyline of having to kill Sam, and they put more emotional weight on, like, Dean's, like, pain over having to kill Sam than they do over Sam's pain about becoming a monster or being killed. Yeah. There's just an imbalance with 
who gets the spotlight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe a little bit later in the season. Please. We'll get more Sam. <laughs> Please. Please. Can we get more Sam? We want Please. more Sam. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what's the next one? Best line, worst line. Oh, best line, worst line. <laughs> Worst line and I think the worst line is I just don't like the the the, the last joke deed cracks. Yes. Yeah, I don't like it. Ugh. It wouldn't have been that bad if it wasn't literally the way they end the episode. Mm-hmm. Like this is the last thing on your tongue. This is the last thing you taste. It's like okay, cool. I guess whatever. But yeah. I, I don't yeah. like that one. For best line, do you agree with the worst line or do you have a, yeah, another one? Yeah, I agree one? with the worst line. Okay. I'll look for a best line. Yeah, because there are some good lines here, but I don't know if there's any one that stands out too much. I mean, there is one. Okay. Your daddy. Well, yeah, no, my okay, daddy so shot your daddy in the head. So that one is that's a iconic. standout line. And I like it. And I like the delivery. And the reveal that happens in that scene. It's pretty good. Like, it's compelling shit. I agree. It is. Especially because, like, John could have called Ellen and at least let Bill say goodbye, you know? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, I am DB rating. Hmm. Hmm. After we got I burned think... so bad by IMDb last time, I don't even know. <laughs> I have no idea. I think this one is rated high because it's a good episode. Mm-hmm. But I also said that last week, and my god. <laughs> so I think this one is like an 8.7. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I just, I think Night Shift for being an 8.9 has just, like, thrown my whole, like, score calibration off. Yeah, you know? why the fuck is that an 8.9? Because, like, I feel like this was better than Night Shifter, but also I don't think that Night Shifter is a representative 8.9 IMDb episode. Uh, huh. That being said, I think... Okay, I think I'm just gonna go one point one lower than yeah. No, okay, I'll go higher. I'll I'll go eight point eight for this one because I think the suspense okay. and the twist will make people happy. <gasps> what? I got it! I got it. You got it? Oh hell yeah! Yeah, good job. Eight point seven. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that after all this time? We would get one. Yeah. And we, I would get it right on the nose. Happy for you. Oh, <laughs> this one Glad says, I found like, out from somewhere other than Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this one says, nice job, Jared. <laughs> mm-hmm. Actually, I, I agree. Not yeah. to be a Jared Stan anywhere, really. Uh, and I am not. <laughs> Please, if you love Jared Padalecki, I don't know why you're listening to our podcast, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> I don't know what led you here, but, you know, yeah. it's fine. And you to be clear, listening. we don't like any of the actors, so, like, if you're, like, a cockle shipper and you're like, ah, I'm safe, <laughs> no, you're not. Well, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't go as far as to say I hate the actors, but like, like some of them I'm ambivalent about, and some of them I abhor. You know, some of them I'm like, mm. uh, who cares? And then the others I'm like, you should die, Mark Pellegrino. You know. Oh, this one says, okay, not as good as some make out. Hmm. I'm getting a little bored of the Sam slash Demon storyline. I much Boo. prefer the standalone episodes that have a good beginning, middle, and end. And okay. they but like I agree that Joe. Joe adds a little extra dimension is good having a female hunter. Well, I think Joe like brings so much good yeah. stuff into mm-hmm. 
the show. Yeah. I miss her. And like, honestly, like, the way season five is, I actually Mm -hmm. am not upset. I mean, like, because, you know, I I don't know if you know this, but I was around when Charlie was killed. And that was... Sorry. It was atrocious. Like, the, the... her being killed mm-hmm. and the way like the fandom reacted was like accordingly you know like the fandom was very angry about that and yeah. cause her death was just for a show that was gonna go on for forever and at the middle of it yeah. they just kill a character that's so beloved and like mm. like iconic and queer and all that and they kill her for like shock value and for um like man pain basically right mm. uh i think ellen and joe killed for similar reasons but the gravity of the situation at that point is so different like it wasn't just like collateral damage in the middle of one shit or another it was like it's the apocalypse and this scene this like death is like symbolic of like we are losing people important people and we're not gonna get them back and people are gonna die you know like it's yeah meaningful in that way yeah like their death meant something and it was a big deal so yeah. i'm not gonna i'm not pre- i'm not gonna be like i'm i'm mad that they killed off joe but, like, mm. I do think occasionally, like, if Joe made it, would Dean have settled with her? You know? I It's it's something I wonder about. What would have happened in that? Like, would the Dean-Lisa plotline be a Dean-Joe plotline? What would uh, she be up to? Would we discover yeah. that she's a lesbian? You know? <laughs> Shit like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I guess she... I guess I don't know enough about Joe to know how she would fare in future seasons. But it'd be nice to see her sort of become part of Team Free Will. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think she would live in the bunker, but... Like, oh, otherwise... No, fuck no. Fuck no, yeah, no. Get her out. Nobody but deserves yeah. to live in the bunker. Get out of there, guys. <laughs> Yeah, but I would have liked to see her basically in, like, every other episode joining them. Yeah. It's fascinating to me, because I'm, I'm not really a particular type of person that's like, I love all the characters in Supernatural, you know? Mm. Like, I've been incredibly one-track mind about watching Supernatural, basically Super just cast. as a cast fan. Yeah, like, I'm literally just here for him. And now that we're doing this rewatch, like when Bobby showed up, I was cheering, you know? Like, yeah, no, I was happy to see him. Yeah, and now that we're talking about Joe, I'm so compelled by her and I like I adore her. I love her character. And it's it's nice. <laughs> mm. I'm so earnest. Yeah. <laughs> but like it is nice. It is. Half of these reviews have the phrase female hunter in them. Like, this is like, a, this was apparently a big fandom argument at the time where people are like, I'm glad that there's a female hunter. I don't think there needs to be a female hunter, etc., etc. Like, whatever. Just enjoy Joe and her beach waves and how she's interesting and how we don't have to look at Sam and Dean the whole time. Literally. And there's not really a gender gap in the ratings for this one. Mm. I just, I still really want to know what the fuck happened to Houses of the Holy. I have no idea! Why is it a 7.9? Okay, anyway. Yes. Whatever. Let's cut this off. Goodbye, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) No, uh, that's it for this episode of Bus Asian Beauties. Next week, we will be talking about... Season 2, episode 15, Tall Tales? Okay, it's Tall Tales. 
So, leave us a rating or review wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on social media. We are on Twitter at twitter.com slash beautiespodcast and on Tumblr at bestiasianbeautiespod.tumblr.com. And thank you to everyone who's donated to our Kofi at ko-fi.com slash bustyasianbeautiespod. You can email us any feedback, comments, or inquiries at bustyasianbeautiespod at gmail.com. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, one recording with absolutely nothing going wrong. Who would have thought?